eight people have been killed and several injured by a gunman who is also dead after a shooting late Thursday night at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis. The Indiana police confirms five people were hospitalized and one of them has critical injuries. Another two people were treated and released at the scene of the crime. FedEx said people who worked for the company were among the dead. The police found an active shooting scene at the FedEx ground facility near the Indianapolis International Airport in the city's southwest. Multiple people were suffering from gunshot wounds. The shooter took his own life at the facility. There is no longer an active threat. Witnesses informed local media that shots were fired both inside and outside the building. It's not yet clear what the motive for the shooting was or the connection. FedEx issues a statement saying, safety is the top priority and our thoughts are with all of those who are affected. Well, thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Last night, Indianapolis was revisited by the scourge of gun violence that has killed far too many in our community and in our country. Although we will learn more about this case in the coming days and in the coming weeks, no piece of information will restore the lives that were taken or the peace that was shattered. Nothing we learn can heal the wounds of those who escaped with their lives, but who will now bear the scars and endure the memories of this horrific crime. What we are left with this morning is grief. Grief for the families of those killed, grief for the employees who have lost their coworkers, and grief for the many Americans struggling to understand how tragedies like this continue to occur again and again. They joined the Indianapolis community in trying to understand this senseless violence. And it seems to me that beyond the need of comfort for the grieving, we must guard against resignation or even despair. The assumption that this is simply how it must be and that we might as well get used to it. We need the courage that compels courageous acts that push past weariness. I want to thank the first responders who arrived at the scene, the IEMS personnel who provided medical care to those injured, and the brave IMPD officers who responded and who are now investigating the events of last night. By all accounts, these women and these men acted heroically, caring for victims and families and bringing order to a chaotic environment. I'll close by saying this. Indianapolis is a resilient community. Last night was a devastating blow and its impact will be felt by our community for days and weeks to come. But in times of despair, I know that our residents will rally together and help one another make it through. The eyes of the nation are on Indianapolis today in ways that we would never have hoped for. And for those who only know of this city what they have learned when we are hosting major events on a global stage, they would be forgiven for simply believing that the people of Indianapolis are known for kindness shown to those who come to visit. 
what they cannot see in those moments and what is difficult for us who live here to see in these moments is that this spirit of generosity and radical love is shared not just by our residents but between our residents it is what makes this a special place that we are proud to call home in times of triumph and in times of tragedy. It is what gives us the strength to see through the darkness and find the light of love that exists within each of us. It is what gives us hope and no crime of passion or act of hate can take that away from us. Not today, not ever. I'll turn it over now to the Chief of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department, Chief Randall Taylor.